We're not doing anything new. We've done this. We've been at war. We've been at odds. We've taken over places. We've taken over people. We've done, you know, we've made money. We lost money. It's like, do you really want to be on this roller coaster of emotion and control? Hey, everybody, like what you see, Lux Life with Candace Barr or any of the Lux Media Studios shows, make sure you subscribe and click the like below. Hey, everybody, welcome to Lux Life and Believing Before Seeing. I am so excited for today. I've been wanting to get this guest on the show for a little bit now, and we finally got him. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce Mr. Xavier to Lux Life and Believing Before Seeing. Welcome. Thank you, Candice. Thanks so much. Great to be here with you. And I'm sure you get this a lot, but can you please pronounce the last name for me? Of course. <laughs> it's pronounced Eichren Coder. Thank you. Yeah, not as, not as difficult as it looks, right? No. <laughs> Eichren Coder. Okay. Hmm. So we, we reached out to you because I read this book that you had put together and I have not read a book like this in such a long, long time, and I could not put it down. I thought it was fascinating. I love the way it was put together. It's called Reverend Ike, and everyone needs to get this book. It's a fantastic book about your father, who is this amazing powerhouse of a person. And after I read the book, I started watching his um, teachings on YouTube. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm such a fan. And I'd love to hear from you about the book. What made you even want to put that together? Um, everything about that. Oh, well, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Well, this is the book, Reverend Ike, An Extraordinary Life of Influence. And um, it is about my dad, as you said. And my father was uh, an evangelist, right? But what was very unique about him is that he was an evangelist who taught metaphysics and i'm mm -hmm. sure you know most of your audience understands that metaphysics has to do with those things beyond the physical that's literally what it means metaphysics beyond the physical now nothing new about metaphysics you know it's 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 all about ancient wisdom that our ancestors had and understood in fact religion is a subset of metaphysics i don't think most mm -hmm. people realize that but mm -hmm religion is within the overall broader ca broader category of metaphysics so my dad taught the broader metaphysics beyond religion so for example the story of christ becomes the story of each person not a doctrine or a dogma you have to beat people over the head with or toe the line but christ yes. becomes an example of the divinity within each person mm -hmm. so the thing about him is that he was bold enough and courageous enough to take these ideas out. So he taught the broader metaphysics, and he did that at a time that uh, you didn't really see that in the mainstream. But this man... Not, a, not at all. Right, right. Yes. But, you know, he was on all the big talk shows at the time, Mike Douglas, you know, back in the day, and, uh, you know, even Oprah a little later back in the 90s. and and. Um, he inspired people with the idea, and this was the major central focus of his message about mm -hmm. the God within. Mm -hmm. We all, you know, we talk about that all the time these days, but that's what he stretched, stressed back then. The mm -hmm. God within, the principle that every human being has an inner divinity. And he was able to bridge you know some of the old old time religion as they call it you know coming from from the south you know was born uh jim crow south and and the traditional uh black spirituality of that time to bridge that into metaphysics which was just you know one of his 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 uh brilliant abilities yes. so he took that old gospel sensibility and infused it into metaphysics, into the idea that we all have divinity. You know, the yogis, of course, have been saying that, the swamis forever, uh, the Buddhists, and, and so many people talk about that. But he took it from this 
angle of this more Southern gospel style and infused it with that, you know, black soulfulness and yeah. preached that to people. And so it just went, you know, you could say it went viral back in the day. He was on radio around the country, uh, around the world, actually, television around the country. Uh, he had impact on people from Billy Joel to uh, John Lennon, that song, Whatever Gets You Through the Night. Mm. I used mm. to watch my dad late at night, his, his, mm. his, his um, telecast, and he heard mm. my dad say that phrase. Next thing you know, he's writing this song. He's got, got Elton John singing on it, and it's his first mm. number one uh, hit uh, as a solo artist. But um, yeah, the God within us. And his yes. thing was that because I am a child of God, as a human being, I am son, daughter, progeny of God. I deserve all of the goodness that God has. And God is, a, of course, a loving source. He would say a loving Absolutely. God who wants us to have all of the good that we can imagine and beyond. Absolutely. And I fully believe that. I actually wrote a book as well recently, it's, and it's called Believing Before Seeing. Mm. And in the book I wrote, you know, and it's not, I, I don't did not reinvent the wheel here. It's that, that of which runs to me and through me, mm. which connects all of us. Mm. And so I'm very much on that wavelength of his teachings. And I love how he, you know, he was really a forward thinker. He's a visionary. He was amazing at marketing, mm. um, amazing at mar marketing genius. I think that even says in the book, but he absolutely was. He utilized all types of ways to connect and contact people. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, radio, as I said, color. Yes. Yes, uh, he had an amazing mail ministry where he corresponded with people uh, through this through snail mail, you know, back. Yes. Then. And if so, if he had social media at that time, who would have taken that over too? That's right. <laughs> he absolutely would have. I mean, yes. I mean, right now he's got what, a quarter of a million um, YouTube followers, you know, which wow. is pretty decent. Um, yeah. And we'll be expanding the social media, you know, as we're going on with the book promotions and what have you. But. Yeah, he reached out in so many ways and, and individual personal correspondence as well. Not to mention, yeah. you know, 5,000 people standing room only at the United Palace in New York. That was his most famous church every week. Yes. And selling out Madison Square Garden, you know, upwards of 20,000 people wherever he would appear at arenas like that around the country. So he was very much, you know, like a rock star. Uh, absolutely. 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 I want to ask, like, what made you at this point in time put this book together? Because it's not only writings from your experiences with your father, which were interesting to read, but several other people's experiences with your father and how he helped so many other people with their life turn it around in such positive, abundant ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my dad passed, uh, was it 15 years ago now, I guess? Mm -hmm. And um, in 2009, he made his transition. And so it was, you know, just months after that, I actually started writing because his story needed to be told and, mm -hmm. and people were just clamoring for it. You know, they want a book mm -hmm. about him. And so I started and it was just too early, you know, it was too fresh and I'm still grieving and going through, you know, the, the pain of, of having lost my dad. Um, even though we know all the spirit and spirit is immortal and it's yeah. still... You know, we miss the physical contact, the touch, the smell, the 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 sound of the person, and, and the physical connection. Because we're yeah. we're also physical beings, you know. Right. Um, spirits clothed in physicality, so there is that aspect, that dimension that we need to honor. Um, so I just put it down uh, after that for for years, actually. Uh, picked it up again, started writing some more, and and it it was really a process you know i would pick it up start working on it it's like oh okay that's as much as i can do i would set it down for a long time and then i started getting collaborators to work with me and went through a couple of different teams and we made good progress and it was very kind of cathartic and mm. you know, starting to tell the, the story and i just came to an impasse with it mm. and finally i was like you know i i really have to get this done <laughs> for my sake, but for the sake of the world too, because it's yeah. such an inspiring story. My dad was yeah. all about inspiring, and I mean literally inspiring, breathing spirit into mm. the mm. soul of people. That's what it is. Mm. Mm. Um, so 
I have to continue that legacy of inspiration. I wanted to do it through writing um, the book. So I said, you know, Mark Victor Hansen was mentored by my dad, loved my dad. They had a great relationship. And I'm like, duh. <laughs> He's in the Guinness Book of World Records for, you know, I think most number one books. Um, wow. At the same time on the best seller list. I'm like, wow. Mark, will you help me finish this book, please? He's <laughs> so like, he yes. came on. Yeah. Yeah. So he came on board and we revamped the whole thing, went through, you know, from soup to nuts, redid it, rewrote a lot of things, yeah. lots of new content. And then you get to hear from his perspective, which I think is very interesting because then it's not just about me talking about my dad telling yeah. the story. You get Mark talking. And then, as you said, you get other people also sharing their story with Reverend Ike, how they were impacted, how they were mm. inspired. And so for me, the whole thing just comes together like what I, I call it like a personal success, prosperity, self-improvement manual kind of thing. Because yeah. when, you, when you go through it, you see how he was able to accomplish what he did, right? Little black boy growing in the gym, growing up in the Jim Crow South, mm -hmm. came through poverty, was able yes. to mount the racist times where black people were men were still getting lynched right yeah and still had these horrible segregation laws grew up through all of that surmounted that um surmounted financial lack and limitation how did he do that yeah when you read the book you discover that and you'll be able to apply it in your own life to take you from where you are to where you want to go Absolutely. And, you know, it's, everyone always, we, human race has always needed inspiration, motivation, education, but especially I would say nowadays, I, I believe after our 2020 experience, people tend to feel they may have lost their own personal power and it, they may feel a little lost here. Mm -hmm. And it's a great reminder saying you, you have the power, you've always had the power. And if this person who seemingly had all these things, you know, quote unquote, against him at that particular time, if he did all these amazing, extraordinary things, you can too. Exactly. In other words, there's no excuses, really. Absolutely. Unless Absolutely. you make excuses, you know, sure. Well, I mean, we can make an excuse for, for anything at any level. Absolutely. But as you said, we have the power. And so part of the key, the, some of the great keys to my dad's success, that, that first principle, God is in right? Mm -hmm. Let's take a moment to understand what does that mean? What is God? What is source? It's the creating, the creative and animating force and source of the universe and all that is. Mm -hmm. That is not a throwaway phrase or idea. God is in me in you and everybody listening, every human being right now, we could not exist if it weren't for this amazing power and force animating us right yeah. now. The breath of life, we talked about inspiration, spirit, spiritus, inspiration. Every time we breathe, we're taking mm. in life, right? It poetically says in the scripture, God breathed the breath of life into the human being and the human being became a living soul. Now, I don't care who wrote that, what book that mm -hmm. came out of, that mm -hmm. is beautiful truth. Absolutely. Breathe, we're taking a new life and new spirit. So God is in me at this moment. And the scientists will break that down for you and tell you what that means, how the oxygen, how the energy and all of that <laughs> stuff, you know, keeps us alive. And that's all true. Yeah. That is the animating forces within us. And that one million percent. Well, yeah. also too, you know, when someone passes away, I believe it was people lose about eight pounds right when they pass away. Mm. What is what is that? Mm. What can you explain that it is the soul leaving the body? Mm. Yeah, I've heard that. That is very interesting. I mean, yes. when you think of what we're when you think of what we're formed of, you know, as human beings, as spirits within a physical body, obviously we're more than the physicality. You know, you can think of, of it in terms of auric field, etheric field, that one way of conceptualizing is that we are these concentric circles of ever more subtle bodies radiating out 
I don't know, maybe 50 feet beyond us. Mm -hmm. But even beyond that, of course, we're connected to all consciousness. So there's no limit to who we are and what we are. It's just that yes. we're focused right now into this particular etheric, auric, mental, emotional, psychic, then physical body, which is the last part of us to incarnate mm. and the last part to leave, you know, consciousness. Mm -hmm. And you said leaves first. Research shows actually that I think it's the third ventricle of the brain that consciousness leaves through when we pass. Mm. which is the same thing that happens when we're in deep meditation. We mm. escape through that uh, ventricle of the brain. Consciousness leaves the body. So, you know, we're packed with so, <laughs> so much energy and force from the source yes. that, you know, it's quantifiable, right? Yes. Yeah. What, do you, what would you like to see happen with this book? What, what are the plans moving forward? We're now in February. Hmm. What, would you, what are we to see from this? Yeah, well, you know, as you said, the, the major thing is to get people refocused on this idea of the God within. Yeah. And so this idea that God is within us, this animating force, it's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And because we have those powers within, we have a huge responsibility. It's time for us to own those powers. That's one of the second key. You see my dad in his life story. He owns that power mm -hmm. and it expresses through certain things like his imagination. That, that is one of the great God powers we're given as human beings. He harnesses that and uses it to advance himself and to advance many people as he's uh, accomplishing what he wants to do in the world. So I want to take this, we want to take this message out and just engage people around this. Yeah, we'll be speaking. Uh, we've got a book club that's happening right now, actually, um, mm -hmm. with uh, Napoleon Hill Institute. If you go mm -hmm. to revitelegacy.com, uh, also Napoleon Hill Institute, you can, you can find out how to join that book club. We're just engaging around the message that, you know, as human divine beings, we have powers that we need to own, to grab a hold of, and then deploy in the world. If we want to really thrive, if we really want to become all that we're meant to be and continue to create and recreate the world the way we know it can be. Yeah. Because as creations of the most high, we are also infused with creative abilities and powers. That's another mm -hmm. one of those immense power sources placed within us. And I believe we are here to continue the creation and continue yeah. it in a way that has tremendous goodness, beauty, truth. You name all of those wonderful virtues, but that's yeah. the world we want. So we're going to take this message out and inspire people to recreate ourselves according to the image and likeness of God that we're created in. And to continue to create the world uh, in, in beautiful ways. So, you know, I want to ask you this in particular. I've had this conversation with a few other people that I, I respect their opinions on what's going on. Mm. I feel and I believe that we're at a particular time in human history that there is a shift, and I can I can feel it. There is an actual energetic shift. What are your thoughts on that? What do you feel on that? Yes. Well, uh, I think all the chaos that we're seeing out in the world is happening because, you know, we know the old structures are falling, you know, I mean, from government to religion to uh, the way we put together and hold together our civic societies. The structures are crumbling because yes. there is a lighter vibrational essence that's making its way in as we know there are cycles of creation maintenance and destruction you know you talk about the kali yuga and all of that kind of stuff it's a cycle and we're in the cycle of destruction that is going to yield to new creation and it's chaotic the thing yeah. about chaos is that there's tremendous power in that and again those of us who are becoming more conscious of who we are and who we're meant to be according to the wonderful blueprint that uh, the creator uh, made us from and placed within us is that we need to be able to pull the power from that chaos so that we can again create more of the goodness beauty and truth people institutions uh, are getting crazy and panicking because the old twisted masculine domination paradigm has fallen flat on its face. It's yes. 
death throes. Mm -hmm. So we have to be here to be the ones who are going to weave this new, lighter uh, way of being. And so yeah. this is the shift you're talking about, this new consciousness, it's here and it's within us. And we have to understand it's happening at a personal level. Our mm -hmm. personal ego structures are also crumbling. We can't rely on the old way of trying to manipulate, dominate, take, mm -hmm. do it all the, you know, the negative stuff we used to do and sometimes are tempted to do still now. <laughs> That because it worked back. it worked at the time <laughs> it worked at the time and when yes. we're you know when we're off kilter off center we kind of fall back on some of those things yes we have to allow the lighter mm. ways that are coming mm. we have to receive mm. those lighter ways and we just let spirit breathe and receive yeah. that inspiration again and then take those beautiful filaments and weave this new reality. And, but it begins here first, obviously. Absolutely. You know, I, I have to be aware of my ego, my old ways that are crumbling and, and, and reach for the new lighter ways of being and doing in the world and, and with mm. the people in my life. Uh, and Agreed 100%, Xavier. Agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's been my experience that especially recently, the last seven to nine months, the people I call, you know, light workers, whatever you like to call them yeah. are finally, they're finding each other and they're connecting and we're having these co constantly having these conversations more and more and more because they're, we're coming together because it is shifting. I, I've always believed, you know, in the Bible, it says, it talks about Armageddon. I never yeah. thought Armageddon was an actual physical, like, you know, hellfire of flames coming from right. the heavens. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. starting, starting or being d disintegrated or maybe even starting anew. It's an energetic starting anew of, like you were saying, old systems dying and new systems coming in that do work at a conscious higher level. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see that also 100%. It's, it's, besides we've done that whole destruction of the world thing. How many times? I mean, certainly there, there was Atlantis and. Yes. <laughs> yes. We've done that, been there, done that. We've we've done it at least seven or eight times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so let's let's move on. You know, sometimes we're a little thick sometimes, human beings, right? Like we gotta go Sesame Street sometimes, you know. Destruction. Yes. Creation. Yes. Destruction. Creation. Okay, let's turn to creation now and, and do something different. Find find a different way to learn and grow other than the pain, the sorrow, yes. the suffering and the killing each other and beating each other up oh my god haven't we yeah like haven't we done this if you look at you know news articles or radio stations from the 1920s 70s uh, like 1800s like let's go keep going back that 1700s we're not doing anything new we've done this we've been at war we've been at odds we've taken over places we've taken over people we've done you know we've made money we lost money it's like do you really want to be on this uh, roller coaster of emotion yeah. um, and control. Mm -hmm. that's no. The, yes. Yes. Control. That's, that's the paradigm. That's the paradigm. Yes. We're going from this control to, because I think, and, and I'll speak for myself, there's a more vulnerable way of being. That for me, sometimes I can feel myself, you know, oh, when it, it's, mm. it feels so vulnerable to simply be in the world and to begin to receive reality mm. instead of trying to control it, dominate mm. it, make things happen. Mm. Because when I control, dominate, it's like, I, I got this, you know, this is mine by rights because I struggled. I worked my ass off for it. <laughs> so it's mine. Yeah. But the path of getting there, right? The, the, the path of getting there is a way of, of, of being there. When you get something that way, you tend to, to abide in it that way. Yes. And you can't release the grip, you know, the death hold grip you've got on something by achieving it that way. You can yeah. achieve and create that way, but it's not the ultimate fulfilling way to do it. But I've been working with this, this image I got in deep meditation of, I'm sitting on the ground and it's raining and it's, we've had so much rain here in Northern California. Yeah. 
but I'm just sitting naked on the ground, hands up. It's raining on me and I'm receiving life the way the earth receives the rains. Mm. There's no effort involved. Mm. It's assisted by the forces of nature. Gravity is simply assisting the rain down. The earth receives it. And I can learn how to receive my reality, my life that way, because it's all already given. Yes. It's already given. We don't have to struggle and suffer for it. I was just, I just had a download this morning, actually, like uh, I call them downloads and just, you know, aha moments or thoughts outside yourself, whatever you want to call it. But it's just like, I think people have been conditioned to like, you know, hear the story of the struggle and, you know, all that stuff that's not required. You don't have to do that. Actually, you really don't need to do that to be successful or whatever that looks, whatever you're looking for. Um, It can be quite easy. And it was taught, you have to deprogram or reprogram that things can be pretty easy, actually, if you let it be like, I think humans, we just need to put our hands on everything. And Mm. it's already flowing. We don't need to do all that. Like things happen without us controlling it all the time. Nature happens all the time. And actually, when we put our hands on it, we tend to mess it up. (laughs) 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 things happen despite our control yes despite our you know meddling assistance (laughs) and we're not controlling anything this is also a false sense of reality and a false sense of self the this feeling of like having to you know put your hands on everything and control things you're not controlling anything It, it you're making it was perfect the way it was yeah let it be what it is yes it's an illusion that's become a delusion. Yes. And part of the delusion is that we've noblized struggle and suffering to such a deep level. I look at ex- yes. our examples, Christ on the cross, you know, in case you're, you know, <laughs> certainly in the Catholic faith, faith, if you forget that they've got them right there on the cross with all the blood and everything, with the nails. Yes. Remind like see, <laughs> see what he did. See what he did for you. The torture he went through for you. Remind, yes. Think about this every day. That it like you're right. It's just like the struggle of it instead of you know the the teachings of it all mm-hmm. and the space he was in to receive information like that and what he did. They don't that they're not uh you know putting that up there. It's you're right. It's the struggle, and right. it's interesting how everyone you know if you didn't struggle, I can't respect your story. Yeah. Right. It's very interesting. That's where we place the value, you know. Yes. That guy bleeding on the cross, suffering, that's your icon. That's what you, you know, that there's there's where all the value is. So of course you're going to uh, you know, try and replicate that. But mm-hmm. what about the resurrection? What about the transcendence into spirit yes. beyond that? You know, and as you said, what about the teachings? You know, what about the higher vibrational aspects of all of that? What about the fact that he transcended the suffering mm. you know, and, and went beyond to, uh, it took a quantum leap. Mm. Well, let's teach that quantum leap. Yes. Well, that's what's, that's what's, I think we're going into now. Yeah. Finally, yeah. I wanted to ask you this, cause I know in the book, um, you had said, you know, your father it was an evangelist, um, absolutely forward thinker. I would call, I would call him an energy worker. Mm. Um, whatever word people needs to need a place on him. Um, but with you, you seem to have gone more of a spiritual route for sure. Um, less, less religious. I would, I would say, Mm. how would you, what was your journey with that? Because I know your father had his thing and you are highlighting that and moving forward with his teachings, which is amazing. But what about your stuff and and your thing? How did, what was that path like for you, especially with who your father was? Believing Before Seeing, a new bestseller by Candace Barr. Order your copy today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Well, you know, with my father, certainly, he was a great kind of uh, primer for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, when I was a little boy, he gave me this wonderful prayer to say. He said, say this three times at night before you go to bed. God is in me and with me all night and all day. And so that's kind of the orientation I grew up with. And he gave me, you know, wonderful uh, material to read. And of course, growing up in church, hearing him talk with the metaphysics. And I started studying on my own. I studied a lot of Eastern Mm. 
philosophy, you know, the yogi, mm -hmm. the swamis, and, you know, the, the, some of those great ones, and started to get into my own deep meditative work um, using guided imagery, but also, you know, a lot of still state work and uh, transmutation of things that I didn't feel comfortable about me, you know, working on the angers and, and um, you know, the fear and the hurt and those things which are important emotions and, and, you know, valid emotions and parts of our emotional being, but that we need to learn how to tr uh, transmute, to get a hold on of, to take the power so that we can use that um, to mot our, motivate ourselves with. And then, um, I just went so deep into that. I discovered channeling and, um, you know, a lot of my, my personal work and my work in the world in so many ways comes down to spiritual communication. Uh, and that's many aspects of that. As someone of a mystical mindset, I communicate and commune with spirit, with the divine, with the forces of nature, with the elements, that greater world and consciousness that is beyond us, all around us and within us at the same time that too often we're, you know, as human beings, we go around with blinders and sometimes totally. with shuttered perception. Yes. You open those shutters, open those blinders and realize wow yeah so for me deep meditation and immersion in spiritual ideas and communion and connection with spiritual consciousness you know mm. Mm. beings who are not physical angels my own higher self soul guardian angels you know however you you term those things having these unseen friends as part of some, of my uh, my conscious family mm has been very important. Um, so that's really been been my route. Also for me, I have more of a, a personal shamanic bent in the way that I approach spirit. Um, I love uh, drumming and toning. I work a lot with sound, a lot with my voice as a chanter, also a singer. Um, I compose, I drum, um, work a lot with vibrational, uh, energy so i you know i've been studying and using that for for um for many decades so part of for me uh, part of it for me also has been uh the musical connection you know to me mm -hmm. music is one of the languages of my soul and within that specifically rhythm is an important part of it and so mm -hmm. at 11 years old i just got this soul urge that i needed to have a a, a drum set you know i <laughs> And my parents, God bless them, one of the best things of many they ever did for me was let me get a drum set, have it mm. in the place and bang away. And so I learned how to play, taught myself how to play, to, you know, mm. listen to you Wonder, Earth, Wind and Fire, all of my favorite music. Mm. To me, that has been such an amazing, um, you know, communion. Besides taking me through my adolescence, you know, with something yeah. that I could be embodied in, banging out those rhythms and, you know, imbuing myself with that music at the same time while I'm learning, you know, all of that. Um, it's been, I, I realize that piece of my soul signature that comes up and speaks through me, you know, through the rhythmic language. And that's part of my personal um, heart and soul communion, communion as well. And, you know, over more recent years, the, the last 15 years or so of my life, it's, it's been through uh, traditional West African drumming. Mm. And, um, that's an art form that just, it, it takes me to my ancestral roots. It takes yes. me to the heartbeat of the mother and taps me into that universal, what I call the cosmic drum. Mm. You know, that pulse of all life that beats through all of us, just like the breath of spirit we talked about before. The pulse of life moves through mm. us all and animates us all. And, um, yeah, I just love it. And uh, so in Malibu, as a matter of fact, we used to teach boys and probation men, you know, kids who oh, were wow. incarcerated, uh, involved with gangs. We used to teach tradi traditional West African drumming. And then we moved that into rites of passage and initiation, where we would treat the probation center as the initiation grounds. And we would come mm. in as the elders, you know, because in 
You go deep enough into all of our ancestry, the elders would take the young ones out, teach them how to be men, how to be women, mm -hmm. teach them about the elements, the forces of nature, bring their talents, strengths, and abilities online so that they could come back to the community and contribute that, those powers that you know, I was talking about earlier that mm -hmm. my father got in touch with, that each one of us needs to get in touch with and bring uh, to play for the benefit of our friends, family, ourselves, the love, our loved ones, society, the whole planet. Um, so we work with boys. We teach them how to meditate, do life skills, uh, you know, all while we're forming these West African drum ensembles and uh, just great, wonderful work. So that's part of me, mm. my soul connection, music, mm. drumming, owning that for myself, you know, going on this, this, this template that I've, you know, laid forth from working with this book and then deploying that in the world for the benefit of these boys. And, and that kind of ripples out. And the organization, thank goodness, is still going. My friend took, took it over when I left. And, uh, Beautiful. Still happening. Yeah. You know, I want to ask you this. Um, do you think or do you believe that we choose our parents before we come into this body? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and I think that that may be how I started out. But I say that because I have, I have the experience of pre-birth, having the powwow with my soul, with my higher self and understanding, you know, the way I see it, we, you know, we all have these grand higher self that, that mm. the more of us at this, you know, this huge level that is something beyond what I think we can ima imagine when we're uh, embodied in this physicality, mm. but it spins off, I think, many lifetimes into mm. the earth plane, into physicality, and not just on planet earth. There are other, you know, planetary systems, I believe, we incarnate in as well, but it is, the higher self is kind of like that mothership, and yeah. it's in, uh, these different pods of exploration that go to these different places. Mm. So before we come down for a particular um, um, exploration of a lifetime, you know, we plan certain things, you know, we yeah. select the destiny, we set up situations. It's like, well, what would I want? What do I want to learn? What do I want to experience? You know, some will say karma has something to do based on what I've done in other lifetimes. Maybe I need to balance certain things out by learning about this. So, okay, let me take this on. Um, sometimes we bite off a little more than we can chew. Yes. <laughs> take on a bit too much struggle, suffering, and pain. Yeah. <laughs> To learn these lessons, um, but we have this power, I believe, with spirit, with soul, yeah. with with our guardian angels who also, you know, come in to help guide us. And and then, of course, we come through. We go through this turbulent aspect, coming in through the veil of forgetfulness, mm. and into this body where we're constricted, <laughs> mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we start growing. And, you know, we grow physically, emotionally, mentally, psychically, etherically, and more hopefully of who we were comes online uh, as we remember who we were. But, yeah, we pick our parents. We, yeah. uh, we kind of look and we choose the conditions of our birth that we think are going to give us the most advantageous growth. And I know so to some people, they're like, come on, there's no way. They're like, I would, I like, would, I would never pick these. these parents. Yeah, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I think there's a larger part of us, you know, that we're not necessarily aware of now, yeah. unless we're connected with it, that has reasons for those choices at a deep soul level. I just think we don't know it until we know ourselves at that soul level. Mm -hmm. Just for the same reason, we don't know, well, why do people die when they die? Why do they choose? I believe right. death is a choice as well at a soul right. level. I don't know why someone moves on unless i know their soul level reasons for moving yeah. on you know mm -hmm. do you believe that we are all responsible for each other mm. and i wanted to get your take on that mm. wow what an intriguing question are we all responsible for each other i believe um the first thing that comes to mind for me is that I am responsible for myself. And within that, of course, there's an interconnectivity, which mm. means that I am therefore also responsible to you. Mm. 
Um, in terms of being responsible for someone, I think that can be interpreted in many ways. So I, I think it's a matter of how are we looking at that? Mm. Um, I don't believe that I am responsible for someone else's choices that they make. Right. Um, I believe I'm responsible uh, to really be the best self that I can be, to inspire someone, mm. to be there for those that I'm connected to, uh, and to depending on the level of the relationship. There are those that I am responsible to being an example for. Mm. Um, uh, for some, maybe being a way sure for. And yes, there are some I will be responsible directly for their well being as best I can. Yeah. If someone's in trouble, reaching in and trying to bring them up, trying to relieve their pain, to uh, mm. leave the suff alleviate the suffering. Um, and ultimately, we are all in this together. So, yeah. Yeah, we are responsible to each other. I'm responsible to, you know, my neighbor uh, across the street. I mean, at the uh, and across the way here, across the creek, for uh, how I take care of my property. You know, I'm yeah. not spraying any Roundup or harmful chemicals. Uh, we treat our vineyard organically and biodynamically. We're responsible, Beautiful. you know, for the environment because it not only affects us who live right here, seated in the midst of it. It affects our neighbor across the street, our neighbor across the creek, our neighbor up the hill there. Yep. So, yeah, we're certainly responsible um, to each other. But yeah, I think I agree with that. I think that um, if I have information or a service or something that I can provide or uh, to help that person move forward in a positive way, I am responsible for giving giving them that information or thoughts or something that I, I I think we are all of service here to be of service to each other in some way yes and I think that it kind of I, I would use the word responsible if you keep that to yourself or you keep your gifts to yourself or if you're not doing what you know that you can do for someone that would be positive I, that's a disservice yes mm -hmm. I agree and you know again part of the reason for doing this book is that I have mm -hmm. a responsibility to my mm -hmm. father's legacy a responsibility mm -hmm. for it now I, that I picked it up, you know, and I, I, my wife and I head Reverend Ike legacy LLC, which disseminates mm -hmm. his, his uh, teachings. And that responsibility really is to always try and communicate the highest vibrational messages possible that will hopefully inspire breathe life mm. into someone and kindle a light within a darkness mm. that someone may be going through or feeling um and that's centered within me first of all yeah. receiving that breath of life and receiving that uh, that light within my own darkness you know that needs yeah. to be illuminated and then oh i breathe in deeply and then i can you know in spirit someone and then i can give light or enlightenment you know and be the best example obviously not being perfect or anything like right that. right you know, no it's not not on that level but it's just being and doing my best yes well what you're what you're here for really yes do you did you ever think you know because because he left such a mark um and he's it was such a big personality Mm. Uh, I loved, I loved it. Like I love, I love the extravagance. Some people might call it extravagance. I, I yeah. call it living life, living yeah. your best life. Yeah. Um, That's I fun. loved, I, I love all that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it shows, it shows people it's possible. Um, did you ever feel, I don't know how to really word this. Did you ever feel, was there any point that you thought like oh no I want to showcase my own thing I don't want to you know maybe seemingly be under my father's um what is the word shadow yeah yeah do you, do you ever feel like did you ever feel like that 
every day. <laughs> I'm still dealing with that issue. You know, here I am promoting his book and, you know, and, and it's like, oh, there's, I have so many wonderful po- projects stacked up that you know, my own uh, platform is called Xavier Soul Streams. And that's where I present my own music, my own inspirational message. And I, I have guided meditations mm. on there and all kinds of, you know, interesting stuff of, of spiritual. Ex- I did see that actually. Fog, you know, yeah. and so that's taken a back seat lately because, you know, we've been, been promoting this. I, yes. I, you know, naively first time book writer, even though I've written a lot of other stuff this is my first book. I, mm. Mm. I thought getting the book, book written, put it, putting it out was 90% of the work. But Not the, at all. Uh, <laughs> the promotion, the marketing. Yes. I had no idea. You know, my co-writer yeah. Mark, of course, has been through this rodeo many times, but I yeah, Yeah. So yeah, I'm still here. We go. All right, Dad's overshadowing <laughs> in the spotlight. <laughs> but hey, I chose that. Right? It's it's before birth. I'm like, hmm, this is an interesting. This is going to set me up for some great lessons. Yes, that have to do with my being able to shine my light still mm-hmm. within this what has felt like a grand or overlighting thing over me my entire life mm, right? mm, mm. so it's been about me finding really i would say first of all what my own light is mm. and i've you know i've done that some of the ways that i've shared with you now and in, in other private ways and you know and i do explain some of, in the book some of the psychological challenges of coming yes under a bigger than life fa- life father Yes. Being in that shadow, a lot of times that means, you know, my own light wasn't allowed, you know, to completely spread the way it should have been. Mm. But, um, and, you know, he and I, we clashed. And I, you know, from his egocentric point of view, and my, yeah, my dad was a great man and everything, but he had a big ego. Mm-hmm. And it was tough, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. fighting against that ego. Mm. For him, I was born to take over his whole thing, and which I did, <laughs> and you know, morphed it, changed it, did my own thing within it and with yes. it. Now have transformed it to a again a lighter, you know, mechanism and way of being. You know, we, we talked about that, the, the yeah. transforming the old into a lighter way, uh, so that we can carry things into the future. Um. But yeah, I'm still dealing with that, right? Mm, mm. From writing the book um, until now, now promoting it, marketing it, all this stuff outside of the book, what have you noticed that has changed within yourself mm. from the beginning of that? Oh, yes, wonderful question. Um, certainly, you know, in line with this dynamic we were just talking about, it also mm. it has required Required me to step up to a level that I find I have to make choices about what's the most important for me thing for me to do in this moment. Mm. There are so many great opportunities. The mm. book Xavier Soul Streams, Reverend Ike Legacy. Each of these entities has, you know, dimensions of possibilities mm. that are coming online. And sometimes it feels utterly overwhelming, right? Yeah. Confession here, keeping it real. Yeah. And I've had to deal with the sense of overwhelm of it all. Mm. Mm. And so I'm just working at how I manage that. Yeah. And it comes, I think some of it has to do with priorities, being clear with um tapping into my center staying connected to my center to be able to feel in the moment okay soul spirit higher self what is it in this moment that is important an offer came in from candace bar to do it like oh yeah that's that sounds absolutely wonderful we can talk about the book she's you know does some wonderful podcasts with some great guests yeah let's lock that in that's important mm-hmm. so here i am mm-hmm. it's really It's that, it's like one foot in front of the other in some ways, back to those basics. Yeah. Um, And at the same time, it feels like managing some big projects and knowing when to take me time and 
tell that's everybody. A, that's a big deal. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Tell yeah. everybody, okay, I got to take off now. I've just got to do me for a bit. I'll get back to you. Can't handle it right now. Mm-hmm. So it's really just a matter of kind of self-management, yes. self, self-care, yes. basics, and staying in touch with my center. Because when I get mm-hmm. off center, that's when it's cray-cray. Yeah. <laughs> And that's when yes. it's like, okay, what is this Tasmanian devil crap? I, I, that's not me. Yes. Let's bring it down. Yeah, bring it back to basics. Yeah. Let's yeah. bring it back to basics. Mm-hmm. Often mm-hmm. for me, it's breathing. Let me go outside, put my mm-hmm. feet in the earth, mm-hmm. breathe, feel the sun on the top of my bald head. Thank you. Take that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Refocus with the elements and the forces of nature. Oh, drop down into the earth, feel that connection to the core. Okay, we're back. Mm-hmm. Thank you for feeding me again. Mm-hmm. I know who I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where do we go mm-hmm. from here? <laughs> mm-hmm. Great answer. I love that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have you on again because I could talk to you for hours. Oh, um, <laughs> here, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Please let everyone know where they can find the book, find you, connect with you, everything. How can they find you? Absolutely. So the book is on Amazon right now, of course. You can also find it revigelegacy.com. There is also a website that is revigelegacy.com. You can find um, me at xaviersoulstreams.com as well. You see my writings, my music, inspirational messages, guided meditations. Beautiful. Well, thank you for taking the time, Xavier. Um, Everyone, please do check him out. Find him on social media. Get the book. It's an excellent read. Excellent read. Again, thank you again. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. And we will see you all again next week. Bye, everybody.